the it's going through these so quickly. Hey everyone, I'm Sam Patterson. I'm a software developer, and lately I've really enjoyed playing around with AI. I just finished a fun project that I wanted to share with you. So there's this game called Wiki Trivia. It came out just after Wordle did. Uh, this is in early 2022. And for people who enjoy history, this game is it's very addicting. So it's extremely simple, let me show you. You are supposed to place the cards on the timeline in the correct order. So it starts with one random event in history. These are all pulled from Wikipedia randomly. So what I need to figure out is Rahula, the son of Gotham Buddha, born before 1500 or after. I'm going to assume that's before. Maybe early 19th century. No, okay. So I missed. When you miss, you lose a heart here. Moses, this is ancient. A giant tortoise. When was it born? Wow, these can live over a century. So let's say in here. Ah, okay. So I lost my three lives. I had a streak of 11. That's not bad, actually. This game's quite difficult. Uh, if I get double digits, it's it's a decent round. Um, my best score ever was 25, which of course I instantly bragged about on social media. So this is back in 2022, about a week after I started playing, I gotten up to 25, which is a score that I have never beat and never gotten all that close to since. So that got me thinking, how would an AI do on this? This is a pretty good test of someone's general knowledge of history and to an extent, reasoning ability, understanding where to put things is not trivial to do. So recently people have been really excited about Llama 3 coming out, open source model, and a service called Grok. And I haven't played around with either yet. So I decided I'm gonna to try to hook those things up and see how well they play this game. Can they do better than I can do? Well, it turns out the answer is a resounding yes. Um, it's pretty impressive what it's capable of doing. So let me show you. Uh, I made some modifications. First of all, it's Llama. So I added in some Llama GIFs. Um, I have it showing the score as the game progresses just because it's easier to see. Um, as you can already see by, by the streak, uh, it can be pretty good at this game. It's hit or miss, not all of its rounds are great, but that's just like humans. So let me run it and show you what it looks like. <laughs> the, it's going through these so quickly. All right, that time it got 16, and I mean, I, I wasn't recording how quickly it went, but uh, obviously it's much faster than a human will be capable of doing. Let's try again. Prehistoric art, Bill Burr. I... <laughs> okay, so I had to think for a minute on the Gospel of Thomas. When was Larry King born? So Llama 3, of course, has Wikipedia in its training data. Pretty much all, I, I assume, pretty much all uh, modern LLMs do. So it has the information available to it to be able to answer these questions. It's just a matter of whether or not it, it actually does it correctly. And it does it, most of the time, fairly well. The reason I'm able to make changes to the game is that the game's developer, Thomas James Watson, published it open source on GitHub. Anyone can make any changes they want. So I forked it and added in all of the stuff that you've seen. So for those developers out there that are interested, let me very quickly walk you through the code base. It has a node server that is within the repo itself. So I just start that server up. It runs on localhost for 3000. And then 
the wiki trivia project itself is a uh, Next.js project. Looking at the server code here, it's very simple. It's just a simple express server. I have an API key for Grok in my environmental variables. And then I just have a route. When it hits the Grok chat route, it takes the message body, which has the prompt, and then it just sends back the response. Here I can select the model. Right now I have it on 70B, but as I've shown you, you can switch it over to eight. And then it's just a pretty standard React type, TypeScript front end. And then I took in the, um, this JSON here is all of the Wikipedia entries, uh, about almost exactly 10,000 of them. Um, <clears throat> the developer has that linked from their site and on their site, it pulls it in when you start the program, but I didn't want to just be hitting his site over and over for myself. So I just downloaded it into this local repo. And then I put in the llama gifs, I put in the sounds, and then did some, a uh, little bit of changing of the CSS. That's pretty much it. This runs at 27 without having missed any yet. So I'm really curious to see how far it gets. It's already blown away my personal best. starting to slow down because of those grok rate limits. I think right now in the free beta, the rate limits, at least for me, are 30 requests a minute. And if you go over that, which I already have because it's done 31, then it starts to limit how quickly the responses come back. 33 was its previous streak, so this is a new high score for it. Closing in on 40. Caleb, a biblical figure, should probably get that somewhere. Oh no, didn't quite get 40, 39, that's, that's pretty good. I don't know if a human could get 39. Uh, I'm sure it's possible if you had a really good set of cards but um, breaking 30 would be really impressive and almost hitting 40. I mean, some of these are very close together in age here, right? Like sometimes the gap, I mean, three cards in the 1500s, four in the 16, like here, the 1900s, 20th century has six cards. You gotta make sure you get all those right. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. All right, one last run. See how far it can get. Another good start. It's in the double digits without a miss. Even though there are 10,000 different cards that it can select from. If you play this enough, you will start to see the same items appear now and again. So you definitely have an advantage if you play this game a lot. You could begin to memorize some of these dates. The way I have it set up, the prompt asks it to respond with a date. And then that data is just slotted in between the other existing dates. Pretty straightforward prompt. It took a little bit of work to get the prompting correct because it sometimes has issues with negative dates. It would not like to respond with the negative. And then when I tried to change that prompting, it went too far and it started putting negative dates on things that it knew were positive. So eventually I gave it examples and, um, 
it has it uses a JSON structure and it's actually Llama 3 is really good at following a JSON structure. Occasionally it would not add closing brackets. So I did have to do some parsing of it to make sure that it included closing brackets. But otherwise, so far, using Llama 3 has been great. You can see it start to slow down when it hits those Grok rate limits. I can't wait for Grok to open up their paid service to bump those limits up. Because right now it's free, which is awesome, but uh, you know you can only use so many requests before it starts to slow down quite a bit. It's approaching 30. It's a good run. Didn't quite hit 30. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that project. It's been a lot of fun building it. See y'all.